Welcome, one and all. I am your humble servant, Chief Phoenix, and I am here to share with you today a rare treat. We have the opportunity to meet the actors behind some of your most beloved Fire Emblem voices. Thankfully, I learned a handy bit of magic from Lysithia recently. All it took was a few sweets in the right hand and she was very willing to help me. Anyhow, thanks to this magical window, we will have the chance to speak to actors far and wide. We'll get to speak to the likes of Jeremy Lee, Chris Hackney, Billy Komet, Christian Lamont, Patrick Seitz, Xanthi Huen, and Ray Chase. And now, with the magical incantation that Lysithia taught me, we'll get this show on the road. <clears throat> Window into other worlds. Hear me and open. All right. Let's see who the window has for us to speak with. Oh, my goodness. Is it my birthday? Who do we have but Billy Kometz, the voice of the one and only Ferdinand Von Eyre. Hello, Billy. How you doing, Phoenix? I'm hanging in there yourself. Oh, fantastic. I'm loving the mustache, by the way. I got to take notes. This is that's fantastic. Well, you know, I do try to upkeep a little bit. A little bit of birdscaping never hurt. <laughs> you succeed, my friend. <laughs> Why, thank you. Well, I guess I'll get right down to the races with these questions here. Let's do uh, it. The first of which is, can you tell us about your first experience with the Fire Emblem series? Absolutely. So my first experience with Fire Emblem was uh, back on the Game Boy Advance. I played that game a whole lot. Uh, so yeah, I remember Lynn had her own story and then Ellie Wood and Hector had their own story. So I definitely played through uh, the whole thing multiple times so I can get all the endings and all that good stuff. You sound very thorough. A uh, completionist, it sounds like. I, yeah, I try my best, you know. <laughs> did, uh, did anything surprise you as you got involved in the franchise? Uh, did anything surprise me? I feel like I had never played a game like Fire Emblem before. Uh, so then by the time I got my hands on it, I was like, I don't know if this is really for me. And then by the time I got done with the first mission, I was like, oh, I am in this. this so yeah, I feel like just the whole gameplay element of it and the whole story of it really was a huge surprise to me uh, as a relatively young gamer back then. Universal appeal and you were hooked. Exactly. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Uh, well, out of the, the characters in the Fire Emblem franchise, do you have any favorites? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so I know I'm just harping on this first one a whole bunch, but Hector? Hector is my dude. hes I know he's very beloved in the Fire Emblem community, and rightly Ooh. so. Um, I think... His story was the one that got me the most. Just he cracks a lot of jokes and uh, he just kind of puts on a big front. And as you deep, uh, you dive deeper into the story, you kind of realize that it's all just a front for all of his insecurities about the death of his father and uh, just uh, his relationship with his brother and all of these things. And I remember, I don't even have a brother, but for some reason that just like got to me so bad. And the animations back on that game are just so freaking cool like those sprites like he would just like when you got the big giant armor and he would like throw out the axe and the chain would go out and then the chain would tighten and then it would come back and i was like hector's awesome so yeah, billy was... i am picking up what you are laying down truly <laughs> hector is my dude too agreed uh, well i've got a question it's a little bit weird for you but okay. uh, you seem like a fun sort of and i'm just gonna ask it now there's a character in the fire emblem a franchise named Donald, and I don't know if you're familiar with Donald, but uh, he starts out very do-it-yourself. He's got a, a, a pot for a helmet and a log for a weapon, and it's not even a big log per se, he's just sort of rolling with what he's got. <laughs> My question for you would be, if you were going to sort of be a do-it-yourself hero, arming yourself and, you know, with, with uh, uh, things around the house, what, what would you use? Oh, things around the house? There, okay, I have these curtains up here, but it had like a middle part in the curtain that I don't need. The thing isn't that, the window's not that big. So I just took it out 
And it's like this perfect little like staff kind of thing. So I'll just like when I'm bored or I'm just like watching TV or something like that, I'll just spin around this little like metal staff. And now I'm really good with it. So I think that would be, I would have tiny uh, curtain rod staff. I'm trying to think uh, what other kind of You armor. could have the curtains themselves as armor. And then when you f- defeated a foe, you could say it's curtains for curtains you. It, for would you. Be, <laughs> it would be on brand. And I would twiddle my mustache. I like that. Yeah, I like having a theme and I would be the curtain guy. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this, as long as we're sort of supposing on things. Yes. uh, If you yourself were a unit type within the world of Fire Emblem, what unit type would you most want to be? And then conversely, what unit type would you least want to be? Archers are one of my favorite units in the game. Uh, I also do archery, so I think that's uh, that's fun. Uh, Who would I least like to be would be Brawler just because of the outfits. Um, I don't know if I can pull that look off and uh, I'm not particularly bulky and strong, so I don't think uh, that would be my strong suit. Well, let me let me ask you this. Across these games, is there perhaps an especially poignant moment that uh, sort of sticks out in your mind emotionally? Uh, the moment that Hector kills Linus and he kind of has that introspective moment of looking back on his life uh, because they were very similar, but they were on opposite sides of the battlefield. Um, that was really big. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, looking at the Fire Emblem franchise, there really is a feast for the eyes. Agreed. And uh, it's sort of an impossible question, but do you have uh, character designs or, or costumes that especially sort of stick out in your mind as being especially you know, beautiful or, or impressive looking? Um, I feel like, again, yeah, an embarrassment of riches on that one. I, there's something about that first, the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems with the sprite art that just is so, so gorgeous and so fun to look at. And I can still remember a lot of them vividly. Just the mages, just the low level mages in that one. They do like this really cool, like spin around and then they like dab kind of and like go down like that. And then as they look away from the battle and then they're like the magic spell comes out. I remember that being freaking amazing. Just all the really cool sword animations in that one. Uh, But there's something about those sprites, man, that classic artwork that just gets me and just kind of sticks in your brain. As they say... If loving that is wrong, I don't want to be Sprite. <laughs> oh, well. that, I think, well, they've said it now at least once. My grandpa's there been saying go. that for years. <laughs> Back to the questions for you, Billy. Um, I have heard through the grapevine, a little bird told me, so to speak, that uh, you wish you could be Hector. And I, uh, indeed, your answers today have sort of reflected that general interest in Hector. So I feel like this, this is your moment. This is your podium to give us your best Hector. Oh, man. Well, I don't know, man. I, I feel like if... Uh, if Patrick ever heard this, you know, he would be like, Oh no, that's too good. They're going to, they're going to recast me. This, this, uh, so I don't want to, I don't want to tread on any shoes, you know, here, but uh, he's a little bit, let's see. Uh, he's a little chestier than I would be. So he'd be right there and he does anything he can for his friends. And he's got a big old ax. And uh, yeah. So I think uh, this would be my Hector voice right here. I'm kind of digging it. That sounds very good. I, I think Patrick's got some stuff to worry about there, but uh, let me ask you this. Uh, talking about uh, Ferdinand von Eyre, are there any moments that uh, sort of stick out in your mind from the recording process? I'll never forget that first day. <laughs> Patrick was at the, uh, behind the booth, and he just pressed the button so that I could hear him, and he goes, so this is for the new Fire Emblem. And that was just like, oh, my God. What? And I just, I had no idea. It was such a shock. And then like my heart just burst out of my chest and I got super, super unbelievably nervous about the rest of the recordings. It sounds like it was uh, good memories all around. We should exactly, say. exactly. <laughs> Nothing but good memories. Excellent, excellent. Apparently, uh, your Japanese counterpart, the seiyu mm-hmm. for Ferdinand von Eyre, said the famous line, I am Ferdinand von Eyre, but he somehow sustained the line Got into the 14, 15 second range. And do you think perhaps, are you, are you feeling, are you feeling lucky? Feel like you could, you could maybe challenge that? <clears throat> Here we go. <sighs> I am Ferdinand von Eyre. 
my goodness. That, that wins. was we great. Is I, that the world record? I believe so. Whew, that was amazing. Was and you were so mail. consistent while you did it. I thought my magic window broke. Billy, it's been a real hoot talking to you today, I must say. <laughs> likewise, likewise, Phoenix. <laughs> Thank you for joining us so much, and uh, hopefully we'll get to speak to you again. I hope so. Take care. Fare thee well, sir. Let's see who the window has for us. What a treat, everyone. It's Jeremy Lee, voice of Cedar, May, and of course, Lady Rhea. Hello. Hi. I cannot believe this is happening. I heard that this might be possible, but the fact that I'm really here talking to you, Finn, I, I, as, as the young people say, I am shook. Oh, it's a red letter day all around. Well, we'll get right to the questions, shall we? First question, can you tell us about your first experience with the Fire Emblem series? Oh, so I don't remember if my first session was for Sita, um, for Fire Emblem Heroes, or for May for Fire Emblem Echoes, one of those two. And that was my intro into the world of Fire Emblem. Obviously, I knew about the universe, but it's so expansive and there are so many games. And my intro into playing uh, the games was with Fire Emblem Heroes. And it was another great way to jump into the world in a very uh, portable, convenient way. And let me ask you, as you got involved in the franchise more and more, did, did anything uh, stand out to you or surprise you? There's always surprises. I mean, isn't that what, what Fire Emblem is about? I think... For um, Heroes, when I started playing the game, I had always thought like with a universe this this big and with so many different characters, this game was gonna be really, really hard. And I was not really a skilled player. Um, and it wasn't, it was very approachable and it felt like a great way to welcome me into the world. So I really loved that. Well, let me ask you, uh, of all the characters of which there are a multitude, uh, do you have any, aside from those that you voice yourself, that uh, sort of stand out to you as ones you especially like? I'm pretty biased in, uh, in, in this because while I'm voicing the characters, I am obviously feel very connected to them. And so my favorite characters are the ones that have a deep personal relationship with the characters that I play. So I got to say Marth for obvious reasons, but I will pick a surprising choice, which might be um, unexpected coming from Rhea. I, I really like Edelgard. It's it's hard for me to believe that you voice Lady Rhea because you're so approachable here. It, there's, there's no intimidation at all. Are you saying that Rhea is not approachable? Uh, no, I would never say that if anyone's listening who's reporting back to her. I did not say that at all. She's the, 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 the picture of loveliness and approachability. I have something of a, a strange question for you now. Okay. Uh, within the world of Fire Emblem, there's this one particular hero named Donald. And Donald starts from very humble origins. He's starts out with a pot for a helmet and a log for a weapon. Very, very do-it-yourself. If you had to arm yourself now, just based with things around the house, what might you choose as your armor or your weapon? Oh, man. I'm more of, a, in my heart of hearts, a lover, not a fighter. And I know that somebody would want to arm themselves with, like you said, pots, a bat, something that, I don't know, could protect you if you were in a state of battle. And uh, my first thought was like, um, a rainbow blanket as a cape and Christmas lights and pillows and plush toys. So I probably would not be the most effective person in battle, but I sure would be a good healer and support system. That seems very, very true to yourself. And if you were to put a pot on your head or, you know, have a couch cushion in front of you, that might be a step down fashion wise. But I feel like the rainbow blanket. It wouldn't jive. Yeah. 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 No, I I, I, it's a very good answer. Yes. Thank you for understanding me. Well, one thing about the Fire Emblem franchise that uh, I feel like fans, you know, old and new have come to recognize and perhaps fear is that if you play the game in classic mode, when a character dies in battle, that's it, they're gone. Which character, if they died on the battlefield, oh. would be a bridge too far and you'd reload the game? It would be so hard to watch May die. She's so bubbly and fun and vivacious, but 
Sita is is a representation of like love and hope and I would hate to watch that die. And Ray has been through so much. I just don't want to put her through one more tragic story. But I think in what I'm dealing with in my current life, uh, wanting to keep love and hope alive, I would have to keep uh, Sita alive. I realize this is a difficult question because there are so many, but is there a moment in, in any of the Fire Emblem games that was especially uh, emotionally poignant for you? I mean, voicing and then playing Rhea in general. There was a moment when we were voicing when um, the director, I don't know if you know him, but I feel like you two would get along very well. His name is Patrick Seitz. And if you can connect with him, I really think you guys would jive. But he mm. gave me uh, a note where he said, I don't want you to try to be regal and wise. I just want you to be you. And it was very hard for me to think that maybe that I had that wisdom and that knowledge that I didn't have to try to be something that I'm not. I think while you're playing the game and, and if you are an actor, those, those moments that you play and those parts of yourself that you long for and that you admire in others, it's within you all along. And I know that that seems like such a very over the rainbow uh, answer, but I'm wearing all pink with puffy sleeves and I would fight in a, a rainbow cape. So it is who I am. And I feel like uh, that was a very important moment for me. Looking at the franchise of Fire Emblem overall, there are literally decades of beautiful artwork. And against that backdrop of sumptuous art, I was wondering if you in particular had a favorite character design or, or costume perhaps from the franchise. Rhea with the beautiful flowy dress and the totally ornate, beautiful headpiece. Amazing. Also in Heroes, one of my favorite things, because I'm such a fan of holidays and all things seasonal, is all of the different skins that you can get per season and you can get different outfits. I've got like a couple favorites for each season, but to have to pick overall, it just seems wrong and unfair. I am pedantic, but not cruel. Uh, having voiced, of course, Lady Rhea through all the paths of the game, uh, was there one uh, path in particular that uh, you preferred to the others, or is that just too hard to choose? Uh, I remember when I was in acting class, as an outlet, if you will, I had a, an acting teacher who said every actor should always have a secret. The the moments with Rhea were, where... Um, the player would come in and, and we would kind of get to know... Uh, that she was alluding to something, but she didn't want to share. In moments like that, it was nice to have that little secret and we didn't want to overplay it, uh, but getting to find that balance was really, really fun to work on. That is lovely. And it sounds like the secret was very useful. I, in speaking with you, Jeremy, I get the very strong sense that you are, you are very much oriented towards love and light in the world, positivity. I want to ask you, there are many different forms, as it were, of love, but looking at the Fire Emblem franchise, I wondered if you had sort of a favorite love story related moment. I love Sita and Marth's relationship. It's it's just such a, a, a true storybook romance, as it were. Um, and I feel like they're such a great pair. But a different type of love that I also really love is um, uh, Rhea and the love and connection with her mother. There is a, a great sense of um, duty and loyalty and respect and admiration. So I would say two different types of love, but those are two that really stick out to me. I have heard through the grapevine, a little birdie told me that uh, you playing uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses love the tea time chats. Yes. And I, I guess I'm wondering if uh, if you could have tea time with someone outside of Three Houses, some some. <gasps> I have my tea right here. Who would you like to have tea time with? And, uh, and and what sort of tea would you be serving if if you are a connoisseur? I mean, look, I know that this seems way too convenient, but you, I 
was hoping that you would bring up tea time, which is why I had my cup ready, just in case. Um, so I could just tell you the tea that I have right now, which is a vanilla chai because it is a little chilly outside and I do love sweet vanilla. I hope that's okay with you. I also have English breakfast tea. I have about 30 different types of teas, whatever you would be interested in. <laughs> I never thought I would get to have a tea chat. This is wonderful. I, 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 you know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I thought I'd always <laughs> be watching other people have tea time. This is truly, Jeremy. I could talk to you all day, but unfortunately, time marches on. Aww. I'm afraid that's all the time we have, but thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Like I said, this is such a dream come true. Until next time. Bye. connecting with in our window. Let's see. As I live and breathe, it's Ray Chase, the voice of Roy and Alphonse and Gaius. Hello to you, Ray. Hello to you, Fenix. It is awesome to be here. Is it weird uh, if I say that I want to pet you? I'll be darned. <laughs> Not at all. I am just chock-a-block with questions for you, but I suppose I have to start somewhere, so... Mm -hmm. First question, let me ask, thinking of the performances done by your colleagues, uh, sort of across the width and breadth of the Fire Emblem franchise, yes. uh, can you think off the top of your head of, of one that you uh, perhaps really enjoyed, or, or maybe it really surprised you, or who knows, maybe both? Uh, you introduced me as all of these characters who are in a game called Fire Emblem Heroes, but I also was in a game called Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia as uh, a really good guy named Fernand. Uh, and I played uh, against Ian Sinclair, who was Burkut. And man, he was fiery and awesome and crazy. And he really, really put his all into that performance. That was uh, one of the, 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 the best performances I've heard in a video game, bar none. And coming from you, that's something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I put myself as top three. And then Ian is like a distant seventh. A true actor, that Ray Chase. <laughs> <laughs> Donald uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is a hero of uh, sort of humble origins. He starts out with a pot on his head for a helmet, and he's got a log for a weapon. But if you stick with it, he grows to be a mighty hero. Now, if, if you, in your life, had to sort of go on that same hero's journey and arm yourself with household items, uh, at least to start your journey with, what would be your armor and weapon? Uh, that is such a good question. Um, uh, household items that are around my house. Uh, you know what? Actually, it's pretty easy. Um, got some books right behind me. And in Fire Emblem, a book can be one of the mightiest weapons in the world. Um, I would use a book as my weapon and I would open it and then fire would come out of my hands. I would hope. Well, it's a very good choice. I like that. You do have many books, so you could uh, you could mix it up as you saw fit. Thank you. Yeah, they're the original Next. scripts to Fire Emblem. They're all there. Oh, yeah, I love it. Now, Ray, I have to admit, I'm very curious about this. What unit type would you most want to be? And conversely, what unit type would you perhaps least want to be? That is a very easy question. I would want to be a lord because when I die, it's game over. You got to reset your save. Uh, it's I want to be the person that the player is trying to protect the most. Uh, and also having cool um, uh, battle animations wouldn't be bad either. Uh, I would not want to be the character that you get at the start who's already promoted. Uh, the, I'm playing Fire Emblem, Shadows, Dragon, and the one with Marth, as I call it. Um, uh, and Jagan is there at the start, and you know I'm not gonna use him uh, because he is not gonna promote really well. He's already super powerful. I wanna use Kane and Abel and my super starter guys because they're gonna have high growth rates. Uh, I don't wanna be the Jagan. Never good to peak too early in life, it's true. Exactly. With the characters meaning so much to you and, and so much to the people who play and, and, and with them being so fully fleshed out in the stories, what is one emotionally poignant part of Fire Emblem games that has really, really stuck out in your mind as you've played these various and sundry titles? Oh man, emotional moments. I remember laughing my butt off at some of the support conversations uh, over the years. Uh, that's, uh, I, 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 I'm sure a lot of the other actors will have uh, some 
some some good tear jerkers but uh i just love the ones where they where you get that secret you get two characters who are never meant to really talk to each other and they have fully fleshed out support conversations uh a lot of the ones in in three houses were super funny the ones with bernadetta um it, she's she's just so funny so i really enjoy the humor that the game has all the time indeed and um now I've got some uh, specific questions to you. Really, I, I I have to know. Do you have a favorite uh, character design or or costume design from the franchise? I mean, there are so many options, and 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 people's armor has been designed and portrayed in, in such loving detail. Has someone's design really stuck out with you? I've noticed your design is very creative, uh, Fenix. Uh, we were we were talking before this chat that your uh, eyebrows are in fact your ears. It's an interesting way to play with expressiveness uh, with a, a limited area of face that you have. Why, thank I you. It's, it's, I, I, I will beautiful. say it's not something I would recommend for everybody. I could no, see that yeah, uh, yeah, configuration yeah. being a little <laughs> outre for the exactly. humans, but, uh, yeah, you know. But it works on you. It gives you a really distinguished look. I love it. Thank you. I, I make it work. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to the hero units in Fire Emblem Heroes, of which there are a vast profusion, there are also the seasonal heroes, the variants based on various times of year or celebrations, and even the duo heroes with two or sometimes even three characters on a single unit. It's really great. If you were able to make a seasonal or duo hero based off of your characters, what would it be? That is a great question. There's a lot of fun holidays. There's a lot of cool costumes that I'd like to see people wear. Yeah, I want to see Roy in glasses. So I want to do back to school alts of our characters. I would love to see uh, back to school Roy. I would love to see uh, back to school Reinhardt. I'd love to see back to school Oliver. I want to see them all in glasses with book bags and, uh, and jorts on. It'd be awesome. A very intriguing idea. And, and, actually riffing off of that with uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, with, with those characters being in school, I'd like oh, to yeah. take some of them and make go-to-work variants. Ilda, <laughs> go-to-work. Go to job. work, Felix. Go to work it. That'd be so they need good. to start paying some rent. I'm not saying they don't, they don't carry their weight, but uh, uh, you know, I'm so doing good. three hours worth of work over here. <laughs> I love it. I've had a great time talking with you today, Ray, but I'm afraid our time has come to an end. Ah, uh, oh, uh, come to an end, huh? Well, uh, so uh, real talk here, Fenix. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do this interview was uh, hopefully you could like summon me into your world. Uh, and that would be so awesome because uh, uh, I would really love to live in a cool video game world where I could fight monsters and stuff. So please uh, c uh, just uh, complete the summoning and I'll, uh, I'll see you on the other side, right? Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, sure. Just um, uh, g give me. Oh, gosh, I'm no. I'm going. No, I'm no, going no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, Ray. Ah, uh, yeah, we're we're not going to be doing that. Um, let's see who our magic window will give us to talk to next. My goodness, do my eyes deceive me? No. That is Christian Lamont, voice of Seleph, Roderick, and of course, Ignatz. Hello to you, Christian. Hello to you, Phoenix. How are you doing? I am well now that you are here. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll get right to it. I suppose my first question would be, can you tell us about your first experience with the Fire Emblem series? My, my first experience with the Fire Emblem series... Um, it was ages, ages and ages ago. Um, my family was preparing for this, this, this big trip overseas. And I think it was literally the month before we left in that Nintendo power, there was, there was an advertisement for Fire Emblem. And I remember I'd seen, I'd seen Marth and Roy in Smash Brothers and stuff like that. And so the opportunity to play as the caped and sword lords that I liked so much was well, it was too great to pass up. I remember specifically I had a hundred one dollar bills ready to just like to, to hand over and 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 get a copy of this game that I was so excited for. It it was the first time I'd played like a strategy RPG. It was the first time I'd I'd, I'd experienced like characters and a story like this. It it changed what what a lot of video games could be for me. <laughs> it sounds like that was quite the transformative experience. What what didn't you expect, or what what sort of caught you unawares, or was a surprise? 
about Fire Emblem in general, I guess once I I, I had experienced that storyline and 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 seven or, or um uh, I guess it's uh, the Blazing Blade now was it has this very sort of close knit family story. There is a lot to it that is very personal and it's about these personal journeys and that's something that I think all Fire Emblem has, but. In particular, as soon as I started spreading out to the next one, like the scale of them just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we got to Awakening, which was like travel across continents and fight other, you know, monsters on the other side of the world. And then it, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And we get to Three Houses, which is, you know, all of Fodlin en engulfed in war. And I think I was so surprised to see that, like, this thing that I had loved so deeply as a personal story also suddenly just like delved into these really really surprisingly deep levels of like politics and 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 stratagem that isn't just on the battlefield it was stratagem between people and it was it was really fun for me it was really cool <laughs> my goodness well let me ask you this are there performances among your your fellow voice actors that uh, uh you particularly enjoyed or uh, perhaps that surprised you that is a uh... That is certainly a good question. I'll give you one from Three Houses right off the bat is, is Chris Hackney. And I've known Chris for years, and Chris has always, in every instance that I've I've had the pleasure to direct him or work aside him, Chris is always playing like the nice guy, which is also my roles. Back off, Chris. <laughs> um, but sincerely, when he was when he's Dimitri in the Academy Arc, he's He's, you know, he has his, his demons, he's got all the stuff inside, but he's also still the nice boy. And that crack right in the middle when you get that laugh uh, at when, when everything is sort of revealed at the halfway mark and then seeing him again in after the time skip of like the battle crazed Dimitri leading his ghost army, that was a whole new Chris. And it was just so astounding to see this range that he hadn't gotten a chance to explore so deeply and suddenly he just comes in with this like fire and this ferocity and I, I i loved it i was absolutely floored by him he definitely left it all on the table so to speak <laughs> he held nothing back no nothing indeed <laughs> are, are there any characters that sort of stick out in your mind as being sort of uh, favorites as far as just the, just the look just the visuals of them well definitely i'm definitely gonna have to give one of these two to 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 sell if simply because he he captures that spirit of like regality of, of kingship, both in when he's just a kid, just doing his best, trying to sort of raise these forces to take back his kingdom. But also then I love when we just got the new the new legendary Selif that he he is still the same. He has the same the same look, the same feel. It is as though like the crown and the the extra clothes, the extra layers of that, that sort of nobility have been, have been put on him. And it both represents this very, like, this very accurate, like, here's the burden of kingship, but also it's glorious. It is just cool as heck. During the recording of your various and sundry characters, are, are there any special moments that sort of stay with you or, or stick out in your mind as being memorable? There are definitely there are definitely some moments that have really that have really stuck with me. One of them in particular, and I'm I'm, I'm sure I've talked about this before, is um, Ignatz's S support. Um, obviously, this is where the character has the most free reign, and I guess this is the director part of me talking. Is that that understanding of like Byleth's supports are there so that the characters can tell you who they are, can look in the camera personally, and be like, "Here's what I am. Here's what I like." And here's what what I care about, what drives me. And as we were going through it, Ignatz talks a lot about painting and about worrying about whether or not his painting is sort of taking away from what his family wants. And we were getting up into that A support and it was starting to get a little closer and a little more intimate. And as we got into that S support and the moment at the goddess tower, he said this thing that that I think a lot of people who, who strive to do something creative um, need to hear where he he he's trying to like work up the the nerve to confess to Byleth and, and 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 tell her how he feels and he says you never talked down to me you never at one point ridiculed me or laughed at me or told me that what i could do wasn't possible um and that is what makes me feel the way i do that's what gives me this sort of this this purity of feeling this love and i 
absolutely completely broke down i was i'm honestly surprised we got through it i was crying in between every take and then on some of the takes i was an absolute complete mess i i I really was and i remember we we finally got through it and i'm just looking outside at, at all these faces of people who are some of my closest friends who i love dearly of danny and patrick and chris and i just you know, Patrick comes on. He says, we're going to we're going to take a little break. And I sort of lean back and I, I, I let the moment finally come and I start crying and stuff. And he comes in, he, he opens both the doors to the booth and comes on in with like a tissue and one of those like really big Patrick hugs. And um, that meant a lot. And I liked to think at the time and I like to think now that when someone who really needs to hear those words, hears those words that it means a lot to them, too. In the same way that that moment really meant a lot to you, I am sure that 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 moment has been something of a North Star for people playing the game, especially those with, like you said, who uh, harbor artistic uh, aspirations of themselves. So I'm glad that meant so much to you, but I'm also uh, thankful to you that you have also shown the way to, uh, to others. You had mentioned the concept of fate as it pertains to Fire Emblem, and I don't want to ask one of those three cups of bird seed in types of inquiries, but I do have to wonder, what what are your thoughts specifically, Christian, on the concept of capital F fate? Things just got real big here in this in this in this magic window. Things got real big. It is a powerful force, the force of fate. And not always not always a good one, not always an evil one. It just very much sort of, it, it turns the wheel of time as it is. And I think really, if you, if it comes down to it, the challenging of fate, when you find something that is, that is not right about the world, to see something in the world that doesn't fit, that doesn't work, that leads it down a dark path, to challenge that fate is your responsibility. I guess in the simplest way, the idea of challenging fate is what a hero does. They challenge what is put before them so that they can make the world better for everyone around them. The one thing about games as a medium that's really incredible is that you are not only a, a viewer or a watcher of the story, you are an active participant in it. And when, you know, fate comes for, for Krom and tells him to, you know, to stand up and take the leadership of Elise. And, and when fate comes for Edelgard and, and, and tells her that, like, now is the time to sort of look at the world to either to look at the church and to look at your people and decide what is right for them you are the one who is making that choice you are the one who is deciding with all of the strength you have to stand against it and i think that experiencing that in something like a game is something that can inspire you to do it in real life heady stuff three cups of birdseed indeed my friend three cups of birdseed indeed Christian, our time together has been such a pleasure and very illuminating to boot. I, I I wish I could just hoist you right through our window, but I suppose that would be a breach of protocol. So I suppose we'll have to say goodbye for now. Thank you so much. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure, Phoenix. It was really a joy. Thank Lysithia for bringing me in here. I really, whatever she can do with her magic is, is, is truly incredible. I'll get a cake over to her by way of thanks and... Uh, Hopefully we'll see you again. I will be here for you whenever you need it. Farewell, Phoenix. Well, who might the magic window grace us with next? Let's see. We've got Xanthi Huen, voice of air and Marianne. Hello to you, Xanthi. Hi, Phoenix. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is such a pleasure to have you here with us today. I tell you what, I'm going to get right to it. I'm so excited. All right, let's go. Now, I realize there are a multitude of characters to choose from, but of all the Fire Emblem characters, with the exception of the ones you yourself voice, of course, who would you consider some of your favorites? Uh, Bernadetta. Uh, I think that she... <laughs> She she's always so frightened and I want to 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 make her feel comfortable and come out and play with me. You know, I want us to share these things and play together and have her not just be holed up at uh, in her room all the time. <laughs> A nurturing soul, Xanthi, a nurturing <laughs> soul. If you were forced to play in classic mode where permadeath is turned on, 
What character's loss would make you reset the game? Whose loss would you say, no, I, I will not abide this. I have to, I have to restart. For sure, Ignatz, because he is also like quite handy on the field and um, Bernadetta and Ash. Ash is so sweet. I can't let anything harm him. Must protect. I think those three of my, 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 my sweet babies, they, they have to stay with me forever and ever. <laughs> Bernadetta doesn't even want to be there. She wanted to stay <laughs> home. You have to bring her back. Now, when you think of the Fire Emblem games, the story and the characters are, are definitely a draw for people. I was wondering, are there any emotionally poignant moments that, that stick out with you, either from a, a player uh, perspective or uh, from an acting perspective? For me, um, scenes with Marianne and Raph. He, he happens upon her while she is speaking with uh, a little bird because she feels more comfortable speaking with animals than she does with people. And um, he's like, oh, what are you doing there? In, are you speaking like birdies? And she was like, no, this bird happens to be speaking human. And then without any explanation, she just runs away. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was really funny. And he just kind of sits there contemplating it. Like that's like a legitimate answer. <laughs> He's so pure. I, I, I have to ask you, Xanthi, because you have such a relatable air about you. If, if someone were to approach you and say, fire emblem, I keep hearing about this fire emblem thing, but I don't know where to start or if I should take the plunge. And what would you tell them to sort of usher them into the fold, as it were, or, or tell them what they can expect? I would recommend um, starting in Heroes just for like a taste of it. And then when you transition to a game like Three Houses, because it's a bit more of a commitment, but it's because it's so rich. There's so much going on. There's so many layers and like there's so much um, voice acting recorded for it. Every little person, like even just somebody just like um, that's an NPC, they'll say something to you if you walk by them or if you tap on them to see what's going on in their life at that moment <laughs> is there a character in the in the franchise that you've ever thought to yourself well i, I wonder what it would be like to voice them hmm. i think lawrence would have been fun because he's just so he loves everything beautiful and elegant and refined and expensive and uh <laughs> i love how he just like Always, ha always has to be part of the conversation when it's about something very, very grand and uh, showing off his like knowledge about like the noble houses and um, fine china and like uh, you know delicious teas. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, given uh, the sort of characters that uh, Air and Marianne are in particular, as a player or as an actress, were there moments that you encountered within the franchise that were a little smaller, a little more personal, that you thought to yourself, this, this really resonates, this little pocket of, of uh, introspection or smaller scale? Yeah, I think... Um, mentioning Air, I know that um, with her storyline, she had like so much to go through, so much like conflict, and it had like I'm sure very mixed feelings. But I think when I when came back to voice for her New Year's card, where she um, is wearing this like beautiful kimono, um, and all her lines are delivered so much more peacefully, I I really liked the um. The difference between between like her first card where she was a little bit more somber uh, and to this other one where she's getting to explore this whole new world now i had a question and, and you sort of touched on this before actually but to, to bring it back to that moment between marianne and Raphael, where he thinks that she can speak birdies and he, he sort of <laughs> runs with it for a while if if you had the ability to to speak the language of a type of animal i was wondering what sort of animal would you want to be able to uh, converse with so easily I think it would be fun to speak to cats just mm. because they're so prevalent everywhere and be like, what have you been seeing around the city? You know, have you been like looking in neighbors' houses? What are they doing? <laughs> 
<laughs> May, I'm, I'm not a nosy person, I promise. Hmm. Well, I, I think our opinions diverge on that point. If, if I could speak to cats, I'd tell them just to keep those claws where I can see them and keep their <laughs> distance. Now, Marianne's horse friend, Dorte. Now, I'm wondering, is he a good boy or the goodest boy? Dorte is the best boy. <laughs> <gasps> he is the best listener and very, you know, quite, quite patient. <laughs> Still waters run deep in that horse. As characters, Air and Marianne are both dealing with a lot. I wonder, Xanthi, what has your experience been like as the voice actress for both of those characters, seeing how fans of the franchise have uh, reacted to Air and Marianne and, and perhaps uh, relating to them on some level? I feel like a lot of players um, and myself have related with um, Marianne in particular because she is not really sure where she fits in with society and um, whether or not she's a danger to society. So she keeps her distance in that way. I feel like people kind of um, relate with this feeling of not being good enough to be in the presence of other people. And because they relate with her, they want to cheer her on and uh, help her to um, eventually find herself, find her place. And that's something that's um, very relatable and that, that I've seen people comment a lot and that uh, others have mentioned to me when I meet them. One of the strengths of, of Fire Emblem is is uh, really the, the the wide panoply of characters. And, and uh, I feel like in Three Houses, there are so many people that one could relate to. It's... Uh, it's a matter of uh, representation and how it matters to see yourself Absolutely. in the characters that you you observe and play. If there was a question that uh, you expected me to ask you today or, or wanted me to ask you today that you know slipped my mind, uh, flew the coop, so to speak, to use bird parlance, I, I, what would it be if there is indeed a question like that? I was just thinking the other day that if I were just um, other than a student in the world of Fire Emblem, who would I want to be? Would I be like a bandit? Would I be a teacher? Well, you know, like where would I, I comfortably lay in? And <laughs> I think um, to answer my own question, <laughs> I think that I would like to be a, a tea trader perhaps uh, we sh we could get together at, uh, sometime and like bond over tea i will let you choose from my shelf <laughs> Ooh, i might take you up on that i uh, i do appreciate a good cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> xanthi our time together today has been such a treat but alas all good things must come to an end so for now i will bid you adieu Thank you so much, Phoenix. This was so much fun. Please come by for tea sometime, okay? Indeed I shall. Thank you, my dear. Ta-ta! Bye! All right. Who might we have in the magic window to speak with? It's Chris Hackney, voice of Bowie, Quan, and of course, Prince Dimitri. Hello, Chris. Hello! Hi, Phoenix. What? Are you... Hi. Nice to be here. Wherever here is. What is what is here? Who? What is life? Everything's existential these days with the young folk. But as long as I do have you in my magical window, can you talk about your your first experiences with the uh, Fire Emblem series? Well, my first experiences with with Fire Emblem was for. Uh, the Game Boy Advance and the, and the GameCube versions of the game. I was working in a game store at the time and I just kind of fell in love. After I played it, like every time a new one would come out, people come into the store and like, hey, I'm looking for something. And I'm like, well, let me tell you. Spreading the good word, as it were, as you experienced the Fire Emblem games for yourself, I wonder if there were any sort of uh, surprises as you as you grew to know more of the stories and the landscape and the characters. 
not really surprised me, but a lot of the titles have the same lore. So you've got a continuing story. You've got things that relate, characters that relate to each other versus just like compartmentalizing uh, each game unto itself. But each one also thematically is very similar. So even though you're playing a new game and it's a new experience, it, it kind of feels like you're still playing the one that you loved before. Speaking of feelings, since that's sort of where we're at, is there a moment in the Fire Emblem games that sort of stuck with you as emotionally poignant? Well, and like we talked about before, like where all the games have that similar feel, I think every character has that that turn, that defining moment in their journey where they really come into their own. Selfishly, I have to say that Dimitri... His his turn after after Grander was something that did hit me kind of hard, and I hope it it hit everybody kind of hard. So that boy really goes through the ringer one way or the other. Yes, yes, no, got, that makes sense. He got his feathers ruffled for sure. Ooh, <laughs> I, I, I'm picking up what you're laying down there, Chris Hackney. Yes, yes. These puns are just going to take flight on their own. Ooh. It's a particular talon you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Did I have heard that you uh, have a musical experience in your life? You've studied music. It's, it's a thing that you do. Uh, if you had the opportunity to compose music for a Fire Emblem title, is there one in particular where you think to yourself, oh, that's the one I would give my eye teeth to compose a song for, for that one in particular? I would love to be able to compose like the final boss battle music because it always needs to be this grand epic encounter. This is the final, we make our stand here. It's do or die, literally. Um, that music has to be epic and sweeping and it has to touch your heart and it has to get your blood pumping all at the same time so you've got all these different elements that you need to incorporate into the piece so finding a way to run the theme from the game itself into this moment to show that it's really building to this like that's a really cool challenge as as a musician I was wondering if if Byleth hadn't been around after the the, the, t the time skip, do you think Dimitri would have uh, continued his his career of of villainy, or would he ever have sort of gotten back on the right foot without the professor's aid? I I, I don't see Dimitri as a villain at all. You know, he's 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 doing bad things, but he's trying to do them for the right reasons. You know, that's that's kind of a very human thing to do, uh, especially considering what he'd been through in his life. You know, he's he's trying to make amends. He's trying to do this for people that he's loved and lost. So as far as would he have come back without without Byleth? I, I don't think so. I think he would have just continued on a self-destructive path. Byleth was the one who, who touched his heart and, and reached out their hand to him to, to, to pull him back from that, you know, especially in those, in those darker moments. If you, Chris Hackney, were, were to wear an eye patch in real life, what would be the, the injury or the, the story, uh, real or made up perhaps, for the street cred, as they call it? <laughs> what, what would be the backstory of that eye patch? The backstory would be, um, you know, I was walking down the streets in L.A. and and I saw a puppy, he was trapped down in the LA river and he needed help. And as I rushed down to save him, this hawk, just like this black eagle, just like swooped out of nowhere and just scratched my eye. And oh no, I can't see anymore. It's terrible, but I saved the puppy and it's okay. And everything's gonna be fine, buddy. But really at the end of the day, it would probably be, um, I was in the studio and a microphone hit me really hard because I, I wasn't paying attention. Fire Emblem is a very broad universe, and there have to be some actual dyed-in-the-wool villains in there somewhere. So I put to you, Chris Hackney, who are some of your favorite villains in the franchise, and, and what makes them so villainous? Why do they, why have they earned that place in your esteem? There's like two kinds of villains which are most interesting to me, because there's the <laughs> twirl the mustache evil villain, be evil for the sake of being 
being evil, which is fun. It's very broad and exciting, like as an actor. That's interesting. But I like when villains aren't really villains, but they're seen as villains. They're, they have they have a justification and you can kind of see where they're coming from. Like, oh, like he's bad guy. He's evil. He's killing thousands and thousands of people. He wants to destroy the earth, but he's, he's kind of got a good point. Not to ruffle any feathers here, but it's, you know, like in three houses for for Edelgard, Dimitri is the villain for her in many ways. And for Dimitri, Edelgard is a villain, but they both make great points and they both really want to get to a good place and kind of the same place. So you've got the you if you have someone who's actually a villain, you've got that dynamic. That's pretty cool. This has been a proverbial and literal hoot, but I'm afraid this is all the time we have together today, Chris Hackney. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Phoenix. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I hate to talk and fly, but, you know, there's things we got to do, and I'm sure you've got to rest because you're nocturnal. The ever-present dilemma. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll do it again. Thank, thanks, Phoenix. Now... Now, how, how do I get out of here? Do I just, just, just do, I, do I push the, the, the fourth wall? In front? Don't touch anything. We'll, oh, oh. We can fix that. Our next guest is something of a rare bird, so to speak. The window has brought us Patrick Seitz, the voice of Hector and Eureza and the Death Knight, not to mention a voice director who's worked on the likes of Fire Emblem Awakening, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and Fire Emblem Heroes. Patrick, hello to you. Hey, Phoenix. So glad to be joining you today. Oh, the feeling is mutual, my boy. I couldn't tell you why, but I feel like you're always in my thoughts. Huh. Likewise. I suppose we should get to the questions, eh? You've been involved with the Fire Emblem franchise to varying degrees ever since Fire Emblem Awakening was localized into English. I wonder, what have you learned along the way? I think what I've learned uh, personally is that I really I uh, enjoy, uh, you know, turn-based tactical game more than I thought I would. It's It's... You know, as a gamer myself, that's generally not been my tack uh, because I'm not very strategic. I just want to do the thing. Um, but with with Fire Emblem, it's for me that perfect blend of you've got the core gameplay, you've got the strategy. You can sort of go as deep uh, as you want as far as, OK, giving people the spells and the weapons, the skills and doing this and the synergy of this person teamed up with that person. But it's not so unforgiving that if you don't take those deep dives you're not going to get anywhere you can be a player like me who is sort of muddling through without you know a lot of of theory craft and min maxing under his belt uh and still get the reward of i did the thing i beat the fight that was gratifying and all of the character relationships and and the plot progression uh so i guess i've i've learned you know uh tldr version uh that Fire Emblem's really cool. I'm glad that it's it's taken root in, in so many people's hearts, and uh, I'm one of them. My thoughts exactly. Between acting and directing, you wear a few different hats in the Fire Emblem universe. Do you prefer one to the other? Oh, man. Uh, it's such a cop-out, I feel like, to say, but I, I love them both. I mean, they're, they're so... Uh, different from one another. You know, when you're when you're acting a character, you you go in uh, on the game on you know generally a very big uh, expansive game if it's if it's Fire Emblem, mm -hmm. and you do your session, you do your character, and uh, that's all you have to worry about. And that's not to 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 denigrate it, but you're putting all of your all of your focus, all of your you know attention eggs, as it were, into that single basket of the character when you're directing. Um, it's, it's very gratifying. I find it very gratifying, but it's a much different beast because, uh, uh, as I, as I say, half in jest and half not, everything is your fault. Uh, if things go well, it's because you've got a good cast and good material and you just sort of help them get from point A to point B without 
dropping everyone's uh, hors d'oeuvres, so to speak, all over the carpet. Um, but if things uh, aren't going well, it's, it's because you as the director have, have dropped the ball somewhere. And so uh, I enjoy directing a lot, but I do always feel that pressure of like, man, we have all the pieces here. Please, self, do not be the weakest link. Incidentally, I hear that you were a high school English teacher once upon a time. Did you bring any of that experience to your portrayal of Euritza in Fire Emblem Three Houses? Man, um, uh, thankfully, uh, not too much. Uh, actually, probably in retrospect, uh, in my teaching days, I was probably more like Byleth. Uh, I was very young when I taught. I was uh, only 23 when I started and I was teaching seniors to boot. So sometimes it's the similarities between you and a character that are the fun and uh, sometimes it's the differences between you and the character. Over the past few years, the Fire Emblem Heroes cast has grown to be truly gigantic. <laughs> How do you keep track of them all as you're directing sessions for the game? Going into sessions, I will always... Uh, look characters up if it's been a while to remind myself, pull up clips of them, remind myself of the voice. And of course, I mean, it cannot, cannot be overstated. Uh, just the folks at Nintendo on the Fire Emblem Heroes team being the, the, the repositories of lore that they are. It really is a, uh, a collaboration that I very often do feel like the weakest link. But, uh, you know, everyone, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, as it were. If you don't mind, Patrick, I have something of a special question for you now. Sure, yeah, yeah, go for it. There are a multitude of characters who've already been released as heroes within Fire Emblem Heroes, but there's always room for more. Who would you love to see join the roster? Oh, I would love to see... You know what? I'd love to see Basilio. From Fire Emblem Awakening. I'd love to see him join the roster. He, he's tough, he's cool, he's self-assured, and uh, I voice him, full disclosure. Uh, but I just feel like even even if I didn't, even if I had no, uh, you know, skin in the game, as it were, uh, it would be really cool to see him pop up in, uh, in Fire Emblem Heroes. An interesting answer, and well-deserved. But is there anyone else you have in mind? Yeah, I mean, uh, Laurent, actually, Laurent, another uh, character from uh, Fire Emblem Awakening, and incidentally, another character that I voice sounds like I'm being that guy, but I'm really not trying to be. Um, maybe a little bit. I'm an actor. Uh, he just had a cool look and a cool sound and, um, you know, has been around in forever. So I'm like, yeah, he'd be he'd be a great, uh, a great addition. He's just another one that sort of comes to me off the top of my head. Of course, of course, uh, they'd make a fine addition, but I wonder if there's someone else who's ready for the honor of being made a summonable hero. Um... Uh, someone who's really paid their dues. Okay, okay. Someone who's already involved with Fire Emblem. Maybe they're a bird. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Duh, yes, yes. Now I get it. I know exactly who you mean. Oh, finally. I totally agree. I think Faye would make a great Fire Emblem Heroes unit. Faye? Yeah, she's great. Hmm. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, Phoenix? Thanks so much for joining us, Patrick. Okay, bye-bye now. Was it something I said? Gosh, we seem to have lost connection with Patrick in our magic window. A shame, that. I suppose with that, our time speaking to people from the Fire Emblem universe through our magic window has sadly come to an end. Oh, but didn't we have a great time, one and all? Their answers, their insights. I really feel like I learned something. Anyhow, I hope we get to do this again someday, and I hope if so that you'll all join us. In the meantime, I'll keep flying Lysithia with sweets to keep that magic coming. Farewell, friends!